Uh, one guy I'm just plugging in everywhere. I almost wrote him up as a must start. Uh, I almost think he should be projected as a wide receiver one this week. It's Josh Downs. Uh, the dude is just awesome. He's so freaking good. Second year leap in the middle of a huge breakout season here for Downs. Good at the game. Man. Josh Downs is just good at the game. Put it, put it, tat, tattoo it on your body. Josh Downs, hashtag good at the game. 32% first read target share. Now, if you got Downs, just fire him up everywhere you got him. What? What? Why are you shaking your head? You're welcome. Yo, what is going on? Welcome back and welcome to week nine. We've made it. We're at the halfway point of the fantasy football season. We got the playoffs starting week 14 and 15. That is the end goal here. Let's have a great week nine. Uh, as always, we're going to be going through the best starts and the worst sets for this slate. And we're going to be using the fantasy points projections to do so led by our guy Chris Wecht he's done an awesome job this season leading projections making sure all the numbers look fantastic he and the rest of the team spend you know, gosh we spend every hour uh Wednesday through Sunday up until kickoff to get you going and I write a free start sit article over on the site you can check that out every single week I go through every game and talk through the most fantasy relevant plays, players, matchups, news, notes, basically everything you need to know while you're setting your lineup. So let's do it. Let's have a great week nine. Uh, we're going to crush week nine. I, th I think last week, you know, scoring was a lot better. Uh, we had some really good game environments. This week, though, looks a little bit more low scoring. And let's get started, as we always do, with some quarterbacks. We're not going to talk about the top of the board. Obviously, Lamar, Jane Daniels, Jalen Hurts, Josh Allen. I think if you squint, you can still say Joe Burrow is a must start this week. Um, beyond that, I, I think quarterback is weaker than it was last week. Um, again, slate was a little better. We had some higher scoring games. Um, this week, we got two teams out on by. So uh, in the middle of the kind of QB one-ish range this week one player i really like way more than consensus is matt stafford i think this rams passing offense is a great buy low right now um i was into cup and nakua and stafford all off season especially in best ball and it's only because stafford is just playing so freaking well when he's got all of his guys man he is on fire like legitimately right there with joe burrow in terms of his production just hear this out over his last 10 games, including the postseason with Cup and Nakua, both on the field, Stafford has completed 67% of his passes for 286 yards per game, eight yards per pass attempt, gaudy, 23 touchdowns to five picks. He's averaging 20.1 fantasy points per game in these 10 starts. That would basically make him the quarterback six this season. Like that's right there with Jordan Love and Brock Purdy and, and Joe Burrow. Like the upper echelon of like, you know, the pocket passing quarterbacks. I guess Pur I guess Purdy's no longer just a, a, a statue pocket passer, is he anymore? He's uh he's become a really good scrambler. But anyway, I mean Stafford, man, just the production's been great. The matchup is awesome. Seattle has allowed, you know, nearly 20 or more fantasy points to a quarterback in four out of the last five games. Game environment is awesome. Both Seattle and Los Angeles are quick teams, uh, getting plays off in terms of their pace of play. Both are top seven in situation neutral pace. Just love this game. Love Matt Stafford. I also think Geno is a really good quarterback one play on the lower end this week uh, in the same vein as Stafford. Just this game environment, Seattle super pass heavy. And the Rams secondary is, is gettable. Uh, DK Metcalf should be back this week. Um, and prior to last week, you know, Geno, we were just like begging for some touchdowns. The floor has been great with Geno. He's finished as a top 12 fantasy quarterback in five out of the seven games with Metcalf. So if Metcalf is back, I think you play Geno in this game. And I, I really like Stafford. Stafford is like widely available uh, in a lot of one quarterback leagues. I, I picked, I picked him up in quite a few spots this week, as I have also picked up a ton of Bo Nix. Uh, Nix, I was like saying for weeks in my article, I'm like, yeah, he just looks like a really good super flex value. Like, 
damn, there's more meat on the bone here. Last week, we liked him a little bit as a streaming play. Definitely liked him in DFS. This is an even better spot to run it back. If you picked up Knicks last week as a streamer, if he's still out there on your waiver wire and you just lost Anthony Richardson or you just lost Brock Purdy for the week. Um, man, I, I'm playing I'm playing a little Bo Nix this week. I mean, it was the same reason we liked Jameis, the same reason we liked you know, the whole Browns passing game last week. It's just the spot, man. I mean, um, Ravens are just getting absolutely trucked through the air. Their secondary has completely fallen apart. They're giving up 312 passing yards per game. Nix is playing a lot better. Um, still some misses with the accuracy, but we'll, we'll make up for it with the rushing. He's averaging 32 rushing yards per game. He's scored four times on the ground this year. I, like I said, I think Nix is long-term this season is like just a really, really good super flex league asset. Um, but for this week, I'm, I'm definitely into him as a streamer. Like we were saying, a couple teams out on by this week. Um, yeah. Good week for Knicks again. Pretty good week at quarterback. I think it's, like I said, not as good as last week. Those are the two guys that stood out the most to me. Um, going through projections and going through all my work. I think Jameis Winston's back in play as a, as a streamer. I said last week, I was like, man, if this wasn't like a completely full slate and like just an awesome week for quarterbacks, I'd be into Winston as a streamer in one quarterback leagues. Should have been should have been more into that. I think you can do it again with Winston. Two guys I'm out on at quarterback real quick. This week, Tua Tunga Vailoa over the last three seasons has been like the definition of a replacement level player in one quarterback leagues. Averaging sick, uh, he's QB 16 in fantasy points per game. Uh, in that span, just the ceiling is not there enough. I mean, Tua just has to get there with a couple touchdowns. Bills are not giving up a lot of touchdowns, they play a ton of too high coverage. They've done a really good job against Tyreek Hill. Uh, in six meetings against Hill, they've held him to 80 yards or fewer five times. Pretty impressive. Hill's only gone over 80 yards once against Buffalo as a member of the Dolphins. Um, so a little lower on Tua, and I'm also a little lower on Goff. Uh, the Lions just played like one of the weirdest games in NFL history last week, legitimately one of the weirdest games. The Titans just completely muffed so many special teams plays. I mean, it wasn't just the touchdown, but uh, a number of plays. Goff got the ball in great field position the entire game. It's not just that. We've now got five straight games with the Lions under 25 pass attempts. It's just not going to get it done in one quarterback leagues. We're looking for more volume, looking for more upside. I do think that game has a chance to shoot out. You know, obviously Jordan Love has to play on the Packers side. But yeah, between Montgomery and Gibbs getting all the touchdowns and the passing volume just not being super great. Goff's fantasy season has taken a turn here. Uh, let's keep it moving on to running back. We said it last week. It was an amazing week at the position. I don't think it's as strong this week. We don't have Niners. We don't have Steelers. doesn't change things too, too much, but it is still a, a really good week. I, I think – let's go through it real quick. Uh, the must plays Alvin Kamara, Joe Mixon, Kyron Williams, Aaron Jones, Bijan, Saquon, Brees Hall – Ken Walker, JT, Jameer Gibbs, Derrick Henry. Um, I would throw James Conner as like a must-start RB2 along with Devon A. Chan, Josh Jacobs, James Cook, and DeAndre Swift. Um, oh, and Kareem Hunt. He's just, he's just getting it done every single week. Tons of volume for him. Let's go through the RB2 pile as we do every single week. And Chase Brown's breakout continues here. The, the fantasy production has not been great. Definitely has not been great. Trust me, I have Brown in a number of leagues. Uh, but the volume, the trend, everything keeps trending up. And this is a great spot. Raiders have played better run defensively, late, guys. Still not terrific, though. 4.7 yards per, uh, excuse me, 4.7 yards per carry allowed. That's the eight most in the league right now. The big thing for Brown over the last three weeks that I've seen, he's taken way more snaps inside the 20 in the red zone. Just huge for his fantasy stock. Um, if there's somebody in your league that's like kind of sick of it with Brown or just like, you know, doesn't think there's too much upside here, I think he might actually be a little bit of a buy low right now. 37 carries to Moss's 17 last three games, like we said, getting way more work inside the 20. 79% snaps to Moss's 21% in the red zone over the last three weeks. So 
trend keeps going up on Chase Brown. Uh, the trend I don't think is like going up with Rico Dowdle, but it certainly could. I think he's a pretty good buy low right now after what we just saw the Cowboys try to put together last week. Um, shockingly, you guys will be stunned to hear this, but shockingly, the backfield trio of Ezekiel Elliott and Dalvin Cook in the year 2024 did not work so great for the Cowboys out of the bye. 17 carries for 46 yards for these guys combined. Zeke got the you know goal line touchdown. I Rico missed the game out of the bye due to an illness. I my theory is they wanted to see if there's anything there with Dalvin Cook and Zeke. At the very least, we know the competition level isn't good. These guys, you know, they're just old veterans at this point. I think Dowdle has a chance to kind of regain that momentum that he found in weeks four and five, 175 total scrimmage yards, two touchdowns. So we'll see. I, I think Dowdle kind of gets back to his like one a ish role here soon. I'm not excited to put him in lineups right now, but I, I did want to highlight. I think that he's a buy. Um, Brian Robinson. I say it every week is just locked into your RB two spots. Um, this week we're waiting on giants running backs. Obviously if Tyrone Tracy plays, he's a borderline must start. Um, if he's out, we'll get Devin Singletary as like a volume based RB two, but still a good play. Uh, Titans are going to, I think get Ty J Spears back, which kind of knocks Tony Pollard down a little bit. He's going to come down in projections. And honestly, I don't know if you're like sitting Pollard outright, but it definitely hurts his projection, makes him more of a flex play moving forward. Um, I wanted to note Ramondre Stevenson's role did come back up to usual last week, which was great. 79% snaps got the huge volume to, you know, Two short scores, didn't have any big plays, but you know Stevenson was weirdly being taken off the field and passing downs. That kind of changed last week. Um, I think he's he's a little bit safer. One guy I have taken off the sit list and I think is in play this week is Nick Chubb. Uh, listen, I think everybody knew that the the role would not be good for Chubb coming you know off of the surgery and the injury that he had. However, last week you know snaps came up uh, from thirty six percent his debut this season to sixty one percent. He had 16 carries for 52 yards. Uh, it was a horrific matchup. That's why he was on the sit list last week. Ravens are just not giving up anything. And actually, that was a season high to an individual running back they gave up. The Ravens had previously not given up more than 50 yards to a running back. Chubb needed 16 carries to get there. Um, Kevin Stefanski said after the game, and I thought this was interesting, he said, we, you know, we haven't taken the pitch count off here. We want to be smart with Chubb. He's moving well. He feels good. Cleveland has a bye next week. And then... You know, then they have a really nice playoff schedule, really, really nice playoff schedule. Chiefs, Bengals, Dolphins, weeks 15 through 17. It's not like awesome matchups for Chubb, but it should be a lot of good, you know, high scoring shootout games with Jameis back there. I think Chubb is trending up and I think I could play him this week as a flex. Um, Really quick, two guys I'm out on this week for flex decisions, sticking with the theme. Javante Williams gets the Ravens. It's just brutal spot. I mean, we're out on Chubb. We've been out on every running back uh, against the Ravens this season. It's just because they're not giving up anything. I mean, they're the ultimate pass funnel, like one of the biggest pass funnels in NFL history. They're just so good against the run. They're giving up 3.2 yards per carry against solid volume too, like 17, 18 carries a game. It's not like, you know, it's like really, really low volume. Uh, but you can just rip him through the air. We're on Knicks. I think Javante's only way in this game is, is you know, through the pass game. I'm also out on Tank Bigsby. I think Travis Etienne's going to be back. Etienne's missed a couple games with this hamstring issue. He also had a shoulder injury early in the year. Etienne's just basically spent the year on the trainer's table, basically. Uh, this is going to head towards some sort of compartmentalized split. Bigsby gets the early down stuff. Etienne gets the passing down work. I actually might think ETN projects a little bit better than Bigsby this week just because of the projected game script. The Eagles are going to absolutely steamroll the Jaguars. Seven and a half point favorites. Um, they're at home. Uh, Jags might not be able to run the ball hardly at all. It's a good spot. I, I do think you can run on the Eagles, but it, it's really mainly a game script concern for me and Bigsby this week. All right, let's move it on over to receiver. This is a, we were, we were kind of saying last week, it's, you know, the whole entire position airballed in week seven. We got some better scoring last week. That's for sure. Still not as great as running back. We have 
I counted up earlier, 28 running backs with 12 or more PPR projected points. This see, uh, let's see, this week we're looking at 32. Yeah, we'll give it 33 receivers with an 11 and a half, 12 point projection. So again, you know, full PPR, you're typically boosting receivers up, but this season, man, it's just been so deep at, at running back. We've had even more receiver injuries. So let's go through the top receiver two plays flex plays for your lineups this week. Uh, one guy I'm just plugging in everywhere. I almost wrote him up as a must start. Uh, I almost think he should be projected as a wide receiver one this week. It's Josh Downs. Uh, the dude is just awesome. He's so freaking good. Second year leap in the middle of a huge breakout season here for Downs. We're going to get Flacco under center. You know, we were kind of bailing on Richardson for the last couple of weeks. You know, he, he either it's, a little bit of both with Richardson. He probably lost the locker room. Uh, you, you're not tired in the NFL on third and long. You, you got to keep playing. And he's just not playing well. We were we were all over that last week. Uh, they're going to play Flacco. They're going to try to win some games. They're going to try to squeak in in the AFC wild card. For fantasy, I'm, I'm thrilled for Downs, man. He's gone off with Flacco. Uh, 16 catches, 138 yards, touchdown. In Flacco's two starts, averaging nearly 18 PPR points per game, he finishes the wide receiver 17 and the wide receiver 14 overall in those two games with Flacco. And he's just he's good at the game. That Josh Downs is just good at the game. Put it, put it, tat, tattoo it on your body. Josh Downs, hashtag good at the game. 32% first read target share in Flacco's two starts this season. That's like top 12 wide receiver stuff, top 15 wide receiver stuff. Michael Pittman has been the secondary receiver, 15% first read target share in Flacco's two starts. And, oh, by the way, this is just an awesome matchup. Vikings blitz a ton. They play a lot of too high safety coverage. They crowd the line of scrimmage and you know try to confuse the quarterback. It typically leaves the middle of the field open, and that's why they're giving the second most schedule-adjusted fantasy points per game to opposing slot receivers at plus five. So, yeah, if you got downs, just fire him up everywhere you got him. And if you got Jacoby Myers, fire up, fire him up wherever you got him. I've been saying for a few weeks now that Myers is a really good buy low. I, I still think you can buy low here. Who's excited to, to buy low on a receiver attached to Gardner Minshew and, and Aiden O'Connell potentially for the rest of the season? Um, no one. Maybe except for me because I think Jacoby Myers is really, really good. Uh, back after missing two games with an ankle injury. Once again, led the team in routes, led the team in targets. He caught six balls for 52 yards and a touchdown. He's just underrated. Four games played this season, Myers leads. In, excuse me, in his last four games played, Myers leads Las Vegas in first three targets, 33%. Over Bowers at 19%. In those four games, he's averaging 15.4 PPR points per game. That would make him a rock-solid wide receiver, too, if he kept producing at that rate over the rest of the season. Really good matchup for the Raiders. Um, excuse me, really good matchup for Myers. Not a great matchup for the Raiders in general. They're huge uh, uh, underdogs in this spot. Should help keep Jacoby Myers' pass volume up. Just kind of like a lock for 7, 8, 9, 10 targets. Again, I think he's a pretty good buy low. The production has just always been there. And man, in their last four games played, it's really interesting that, that Myers has significantly more first reads than Bowers. Uh, we were all over the Cedric Tillman and, frankly, Jerry Judy and Elijah Moore games, but mainly the Tillman game last week. We loved him. Uh, highlighted him on this very video last week. I was pushing him up in projections. Hit a nice over on his prop. I'm back in on Cedric Tillman. I think you just plug him and play him. Uh, this week, Browns get their bye, like we were saying, coming up. So, you know, Tillman won't have Tillman next week. It's going to be a little bit of a trickier week at receiver next week, but... Yeah, I think Tillman projects well once again. Not as near as good of a spot. You know, Ravens, it was just like best of both worlds thing happening. You know, Jameis comes in. They get the Ravens. You know, they were in a close game, but ended up passing at the sixth highest rate last week. Man, I you know, we saw we've seen it with Flacco. We've seen it now with Winston. Like this offense just needs competent quarterback play. I mean, Watson hadn't thrown for 200 yards in a single game all year. You know, Winston comes out and fires 330. Um, I, he's going to regress for sure. Winston had a couple picks that should have been should have been intercepted by Ravens defenders in that game. 
Winston will regress a little bit, but I thought in general he saw it really well, ran through the pro- progressions a lot quicker than Watson ever was. The volume's just been great for Tillman. Leads the team in first three targets over Njoku, 27%. For Tillman, 24% for Njoku, Judy, and more 18% first three targets here over the last two weeks without Amari Cooper. This just looks like a really good receiver to play this week and for the rest of the season. JSN, Jackson Smith the Jigba, has not been a good receiver to play all season. Uh, I was hoping he would emerge not just as like the secondary ty- uh, you know, target to Tyler Lockett, which he has. It's just still not been good enough. JSN's wide receiver 39 in PPR points per game. This is against the backdrop that Seattle is the most pass-heavy team in the league and still can't break free as a wide receiver three. I said I liked Geno. I like this game. Not super into JSN in this spot, but Rams have been holding opposing slot receivers to just 38 yards per game. Again, we're going to get Metcalf back. I think he sees most of the volume this week, and JSN is you know, just looking like you know, low-end wide receiver three for the rest of the season. We have Khalil Shakir, Xavier Worthy, Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton, and DJ Moore all projected for more points in JSN. Um I think you can play Bears receivers this week, but I'm not super stoked to keep going back and like banging my head against the wall. It's a really good spot though. Car if you have if you have to play one of DJ Moore or Keenan Allen or, or Dunze, like this is a decent spot. But they're also, you know, kind of low in projections as we've seen just these five games together. They've kind of cannibalized each other in terms of production. Caleb Williams has been super up and down. Again, another good spot if you have to play them. They're fine, but they definitely project more as receiver three plays this week. Uh, let's go through some tight ends. We'll finish it up with the worst position in fantasy that's getting better. We got TJ Hawkinson coming back this week. Um, I think I won't say that he's like a must play by any means, but I think if you've been sitting on him for a few weeks, this should be relatively close to full go. I mean, he's had three weeks to ramp up in practice, plus the bye, if you include the bye. Full practice on Wednesday to open this week. Um, Again, I don't think Hawk goes out there and gets like an 85% route share with 10 targets, but this is an amazing spot. Like if you've been sitting on Hawkinson, he does not project well, but I think the role will be a little bit better. Um, If you have one of Kelsey Bowers, Otten, Evan Ingram, McBride, Ferguson, and Joku Pitts. You're just sitting pretty right now. And then it really falls off after that this week. Uh, I would be willing, if you don't have one of those eight, uh, I'd be willing to play some TJ Hawkinson. Uh, One player that is starting to come up and trend upwards is Mark Andrews. He's finally rejoined this passing offense. Just better production in the last four games, 16 receptions, 198 yards, four touchdowns. He has... Uh, the second most first three targets on the team at 16% behind Flowers at 32% in that span. However, the big thing for me is Andrews finally, finally had a reasonably decent role last week, 67% route share, uh, meaning he was involved on two thirds of the pass plays last week. It was the first time he's been involved on two thirds of the pass plays since week two. Again, I think he was hurt coming back from a really bad leg surgery, ankle surgery, Plus, he had a car accident that we didn't get too much reporting on. Andrews is getting healthier. Uh, those two, Andrews and Hawkinson, are the two that don't project overly well just because, you know, again, they're kind of part-time-ish roles, but I, I think I'm plugging those guys into lineups. Um, oh, I wanted to note before we get out of here, I, I think Evan Ingram is just an awesome buy right now. If you can, If you can get in on some Ingram, especially in a full PPR, Say you're a contender, you've got like a wide receiver five and some maybe a running back that you just want to flip and you have no tight ends. Ingram would be a guy I'd, I'd try to target in trades. Uh, leads the team in first read target share in three out of his four games played. He also leads the team in first read target share over the last three weeks since returning at 23%. Christian Kirk is on IR. Fortunately, he broke his collarbone. Just cleans up, like, excuse me, not cleans up, clears out you know, 20% of the team's targets, huge, huge, you know, roll up for grabs. And I fully expect Ingram to absorb most of the upside like he did last season. 
when Kirk missed time. Ingram was averaging 15 fantasy points per game in those six starts without Kirk last year. Uh, that would have nearly tied David Njoku as the tight end one from weeks 13 to 18 last season. And, you know, he's been pretty good this this year. So I think Ingram's a, a really good buy, must play this week. One tight end I am out on for week nine decisions. If you've been playing Tucker Craft, you've been lucky with some touchdowns. I've been playing some Craft in leagues where I'm, I'm struggling at tight end, and he's come through for some touchdowns. The volume has not been good, though. Uh, last three games, he's earned just 11% of the targets, 10 total. Dobbs, Reed, Watson, and Wicks all have more targets. Josh Jacobs has the same amount of looks at 10. There's just too many mouths to feed now that all these dudes are healthy. And it's a terrible matchup. We liked him last week. We liked Kraft last week because the matchup was so good. Everybody against Jacksonville scores, and hey, what do you know? However, this week, Lions, really, really tough matchup against tight ends. They're just erasing the position. 30 yards per game allowed. That's second fewest. And the fourth fewest schedule adjusted fantasy points per game below average at negative four. Kraft is on my bench where I have him in a few spots. I'm streaming uh, streaming for him this week. Guys, gals, thanks so much for listening. Thanks so much for hanging out. If you're not already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment down below. It really does help. Uh, if you have a start sit question, make sure you are checking out the show with myself, John Hansen, and Tom Brawley on Sunday mornings. We go through every single one of you beautiful people's questions on Sunday mornings. Get your lineups looking as sharp as possible. Until then, we'll see you at the top of the leaderboards. Good luck in week nine.